If you are already familiar with amateur UAVs, there might not be a whole lot of new things to learn from this video. However, if you are new to the concept or don't know much about the ArduPilot Autopilot or Mission Planner, the software that does what its name implies, or just what this activity is all about, then this brief overview might be interesting. It wasn't that long ago that if you wanted to put an autopilot in your model airplane, you had to buy the individual electronic components, wire and solder them all together, and possibly even write the software code needed to make it all work. All that has changed thanks to the efforts of a number of online communities that have designed the hardware, developed sources for it, and have written the necessary software code. That doesn't mean that it's plug and play just yet, but it's close. Three efforts that I'm aware of are the Paparazzi Project, OpenPilot, and ArduPilot. A number of individuals have developed their own autopilots as well. For my DIY UAV, I'm using the ArduPilot Mega 2.0 Autopilot, also simply known as APM2. This was developed out of the efforts of the DIY Drones community, which was started by Chris Anderson, the editor-in-chief of Wired magazine. The beginnings and following evolution of this overall project could be the subject of their own documentary. It's certainly too much to get into here. In any case, I had been following that community for about four years before finally taking the plunge myself. By the time I did, they were on their third generation autopilot, or fourth if you count the very first one based on the LEGO Mindstorms NXT Smart Brick microprocessor. APM2 has remarkably sophisticated capabilities, all built into its microprocessor chips. For stabilization and orientation, it utilizes a 3-axis gyroscope and 3-axis accelerometer. For navigation, it has a magnetometer and a GPS antenna. APM2 also includes an onboard SD card for data logging. All of this is housed on a circuit board smaller than a pack of cigarettes. In my case though, I chose to mount the GPS antenna remotely. Apparently, much if not all of this technology has grown out of the cell phone industry, which also helps explain how this can be done relatively cheaply. Although these are not necessary, I chose to add two accessories, a telemetry radio and airspeed sensor system. The telemetry radio connects your autopilot system to a laptop computer, allowing you to monitor your plane's flight path and performance while it's flying, and even change its flight path and other flight parameters during the mission. In addition, telemetry logs are recorded and saved automatically on your laptop during and after each flight, making the onboard SD card redundant. In fact, the latest version of APM has dropped that card from the board. The airspeed sensor system is even less necessary than the telemetry system, but allows for control of your aircraft based on airspeed instead of ground speed, which comes from the GPS readings. It simply adds another level of sophistication to your amateur UAV. I'm working on a dedicated airframe for my autopilot system, but while that project is underway, I wanted to get familiar with APM-2 in a smaller, lighter, and less costly plane. I had the perfect one lying around after it got beat up a bit already, my Skyfly Max. The first thing I had to do was build a small box to house the onboard telemetry radio, which is both a transmitter and receiver. This is mounted on the side of the fuselage, while the GPS antenna is mounted on top. The APM2 circuit board fit perfectly in the space just below the wing saddle. It can't be seen here, but the normal radio control receiver is below this in another equipment bay. Basically, the autopilot is connected between your RC receiver and the control servos. When flying in manual mode, the signals from the RC transmitter go to the receiver and are effectively passed through to the servos as if the autopilot were not there. In autonomous mode, the autopilot itself controls the servos based on how it was programmed to fly the plane. Inputs from the RC transmitter can override the autopilot if necessary. The airspeed sensor system is made up of a pitot tube, pressure sensor, air tubes, and a connector to wire the pressure sensor to the APM2 board. That's pretty much it when it comes to hardware. Now we'll take a look at the software interface. 
A number of very versatile pieces of software have been written to allow you to program and, if you wish, monitor your flights. The one I'm using is called Mission Planner. This video is not intended to be a tutorial, so I'll just touch on the basics. One of the first things you'll do is go to the Flight Planner page. This is where you set your waypoints. After choosing your flight location on the map, you'll set the home point and then add waypoints. Waypoint details can include altitude, speed, and some specific actions such as loiter for a given number of turns around that particular waypoint. The pattern example I entered here is quite simple and will result in the plane flying to each of the four waypoints in turn and then circling over the home point until I take manual control or tell the plane to do something different from the laptop via the telemetry radio. At this point you will either load the waypoints directly into APM2 from your computer or save the waypoint file to be recalled and uploaded to APM2 at another time. I usually do this part at home then pack up and head to the flying field. Once at the field it's time to set up shop. When you connect the onboard system to its battery APM2 records its current location and saves it as the home point. You can capture this actual home point in Mission Planner once your plane is connected via the telemetry radio. Before flying, you need to go through a more extensive pre-flight check than normal for an RC plane. For example, you'll put your plane in stabilize mode and while holding it, rotate it through its pitch and roll axes to make sure APM2 is moving the control surfaces in the correct direction. A few other things to be checked are that you have a good 3D fix from the GPS system and that you have a good radio signal. Now you're ready to fly. Once in the air, you don't have to wait long to switch from manual to auto mode. The Skyfly Max is flying completely under autopilot control now. I'll watch it make at least one circuit before taking a look at the laptop. Mission Planner uses telemetry coming down from the plane to display its flight path over the ground, pitch and roll attitude, airspeed, and other data. Mode changed to auto, heading to waypoint 1. Here we see that the plane is approaching a waypoint, and then watch the plane itself make the turn. Heading to waypoint 2. Heading to waypoint 2. Altitude is 265. Ground speed is 42. Heading to waypoint 3. A number of commands are available that can be sent from Mission Planner to the plane via the telemetry radio. I just sent a command to tell the plane to fly to a point over the flying field and loiter, or circle, around that point Heading until I send another one. command. I haven't tested Ground this yet, but the autopilot will even land the plane for you. Heading to waypoint 1, altitude is 255. As I noted before, 
a log of the flight data is being recorded automatically to the PC. The flight can be replayed in Mission Planner, but it can also be replayed in three dimensions in Google Earth. In this view, we can see the entire flight path at one time. In another view, this time from above and to the side of the flying field, we can watch a replay of the flight sped up in time. Before you get to the point of flying your plane for real, as I have just shown, it is advisable to first set up your control hardware in simulation mode. Instead of flying your real plane, you can use your transmitter to manually fly a virtual plane, then switch over to auto mode and allow the APM2 autopilot to control the virtual plane. People often ask what the purpose is of going through the simulation phase before flying for real. What I found is that it is a very educational exercise. You can experiment with control settings, waypoint actions, and so on without the fear of damaging or even losing your real plane. This mission that I just set up follows the beautiful Skykomish River Valley near Salton, Washington. The simulator that I'm connected to is X-Plane, another open source software project. I'm using my regular RC transmitter to take off and fly the plane initially. I have now switched over to auto mode and APM2 is flying the virtual plane. X-Plane is sending simulated data to Mission Planner, just as if we had a telemetry radio, and once again we can track the plane's flight path over the ground and view other flight data. In a nutshell, this is what amateur UAV flying is all about. The only thing missing is a live video downlink, and for that I'm working on the dedicated airframe I mentioned before. My plane is a scale design of the RQ-2A Pioneer UAV, an early model used by the Navy and other services. The original was designed and built by Israel Aerospace Industries, or IAI, and was also built by AAI Corporation here in the States. The onboard video system comes from a company called Range Video, but there are lots of sources for these systems. The design is complete, I have most of the needed parts, and construction is underway, although just. If I'm lucky, I'll have it flying by next season. Thanks for taking time to watch my video. I hope you've learned something new, and might even have become a little interested in this hobby.